Hey guys, this is Matt with Mix Coach and the Modern Producer, and today I'm wanting to do a little overview slash review of uh, Ozone 7 Advanced. I recently upgraded, and I just wanted to share my thoughts with it from previous uh, releases going back to 5, because 5 to 6 was actually a pretty big change, and um, uh, to 7, kind of keeping consistent with 6, but with, with new features that are really cool too. Uh, I know, first off, a lot of people were upset when they dropped uh, features like Reverb and a, a few other, uh, like this, the sliders, uh, the, the, the effect sliders that you could adjust the amount of the intensity of each effect. Um, and, you know, I was one of those too. But uh, uh, from what I understand, they were just trying to eliminate some features that really, uh, from where they would pull people... Uh, and get feedback about what was least used and those were kind of the least used things and they just were trying to clean up the code and make uh, the plugin overall more efficient so I can understand where they're coming from there um, but uh, still uh, I definitely uh, I thought some of the reverb uh, algorithms were really good so I, I do miss those because I, I would use those uh, on actual auxiliaries rather than uh, overall mastering um, so maybe they can make that as a separate plugin. That'd be pretty cool. But uh, you know, going to six, uh, I definitely liked the uh, GUI um, overhaul they did. I definitely liked the, the new user interface uh, more than previous versions, uh, which obviously has nothing to do with how it performs. I just I do like the way things look too. Um, but for me, uh, the the added. Uh, feature of the dynamic EQ was definitely worth the upgrade with six, and now going into seven, um, for me actually the the coolest, most important feature for me, considering the generation we live in now that everything goes to iTunes or MP3 or whatever, is having the codec audition actually in the plugin, and you can you can listen to it in real time and listen to the actual artifacts solo it. Uh, it's just absolutely phenomenal. Uh, it's really uh, priceless because it, <clears throat> having to reference your mixes uh, with the, the final format and being able to hear exactly what it's doing and go back and make changes that can accommodate that is uh, huge um, in the overall grand scheme of things. And especially with home mastering now, with there's so many more home mastering setups that you know people are just on a budget they can't afford to to take it to a mastering house, and you end up having to do it yourself it's really a, a fantastic thing and uh, the uh, added vintage um, pull tech modeling they did and uh, tape machine modeling was a nice new uh, addition as well uh, we'll go ahead and take a listen to some of this I have a mix here that is we're gonna just faux master it and wait for my computer to freshen there we go uh, the the added new uh, intelligent release control number four I'm really liking you can really push this limiter and um, uh, it still sounds really clean for when you have to have reference mixes or whatever that have to be really hot I typically don't like to go uh, hotter than negative 10 dB RMS for my mixes but if you have to push it further if 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 uh, uh, the client or you know, you know the, the label are just absolutely pressing for it to be hotter it can go hotter and uh, still sound fairly clean so that is a plus so without really any limiting or a lot of volume changes going on we'll check out what the rest of this is doing here and uh, I'll bring bring it in and out can really hear on the tape it's really subtle it's uh, doing what tape does softening that high end uh, a little bit of that low end bump and uh, it's really just uh, it's really good I you know I've shot it out with the uh, slate which is my go-to and uh, it really holds its own with it and uh, I think people will find a lot of good uses for it and with the dynamic EQ it's always great for me this uh, 
uh, allows you to not have to compress and it sounds more natural with the, with the way it, it uh, doesn't especially since I, I, I like to multiband compress um, you don't have to worry about as much phase shift with all the crossover filters and it just it, it's a real real godsend for uh, natural sounding EQ changes and the way it responds and with this little gem here I didn't really use it in this mix but I went ahead and created a setting with the classic kind of pull tech setup to let you hear what it can do to the mix we'll go ahead and, and bring it in and out real quick You can definitely hear there, you get that, that fat low end and sparkly highs where you can also do the adjacent cut and it kind of just makes everything fit together. It's not pillowy sounding, it's not hollow, uh, it's not brittle. It, it, it really just it pull text rock. And uh, again, there's a lot of emulations out there, but this is, I find uh, it's a really good one and uh, you'll definitely find uses for it as well. And the limiter we'll go ahead and push it and we'll kind of show you what I'm talking about where you can really push this one and it's still clean does I mean even when you start pushing it pretty hard it stays clean and there's a few different settings you can try um, uh, just to check out and you know I always recommend going through everything and really listening to it really well and uh, and uh, definitely don't be fooled by the loudness which also brings me to you know you can go over here and just hit the little ear and bypass it so you can level match it and really hear what what it's doing and last but not least, let's go ahead and check out the codec and what it does. You can choose between AAC format, which is iTunes format, different uh, kilobit rates, and uh, MP3. We'll start with MP3. We'll start with the highest quality, and then we'll jump around, and we'll actually solo it, and you can hear what it's doing to change the audio. As you can see, again, it's going to be really helpful and beneficial to you uh, uh, messing around with that and really hearing what uh, uh, compressed formats are going to do to your final audio and, and being able to adjust that in real time. It's 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 phenomenal. Um, you know, everything else in in seven is pretty much the same as the other releases. You kind of already know what's what's going on there. So um, definitely for me, the 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 codec audition in real time. Uh, within the plugin is solely worth the upgrade alone and having the uh, extra vintage emulations put in on top is is really just a, a, a sweet bonus uh, and then on top of that you know with every release there's you know a, a, a CPU enhancements and, and bug fixes and stuff like that so uh, if you haven't upgraded to uh, 7 and you're on 6 I definitely recommend it and especially if you're you're on 5 or, or 4 or whatever um, definitely consider upgrading to it because it's definitely worth it. Uh, and also another thing I'll mention, because with 6, I was having some CPU spike issues. I think they finally fixed it because I haven't been having the same uh, spike issues that were driving me crazy with 6. So uh, definitely check it out, guys. Until next, uh, next time, guys, uh, and happy mixing.